everyone, this is Andy with the Coffee with the Geek program. Uh, with me today is a teacher from Kansas, my first uh, Kansas teacher, Whitney. So uh, congratulations, you're number one for today. <laughs> um, so excited. <laughs> Whitney Woodward is a teacher from Burton, Kansas, and uh, she teaches at Burton Public Schools. She's a social studies teacher that teaches sixth, seventh, and eighth grade social studies, and she loves her job. That's always a good thing. Um, she also has a social studies teacher husband named Dustin and a little boy named uh, Nolan for five months old. Oh, they're so, so adorable at that age. And they, they keep getting adorable. <laughs> More adorable as you go, so you'll like it. Um, I came across Whitney through actually a contact with Zoom In, and Zoom In is kind of a social studies related uh, website that I'd like to learn more about. And they kind of connected me with with Whitney because you're doing a lot of good stuff. So I guess my first question to you, Whitney, is, is first, thank you for joining me today. And, and second of all, can you talk about Zoom In and what it is and how is it good for social studies folks? Um, of course. So I go to this conference every year. Um, it's a socialist conference where all of the um, or good teachers in social studies in Kansas get together and just talk about like best practices. So Noah Goodman, one of their um, people at Zoom In, he um, got me in contact with them, and um, I was one of the pilot teachers for their program. Um, so I can actually show you through the screen, share it, and kind of show you what it looks like. Um, these are some of the different lessons that um, they do. I did two um, when I piloted it. I did the low mill girls, and then I also did one about African Americans' military service during the war. So basically what the kids do is they go on, um, there's like four primary source documents that they're supposed to analyze. Um, and then they write basically a paper at the end um, taking a side. So like the lesson question for this one is how did the North and the South view African Americans military service in the Civil War? So they would take a stance on that and then decide um, what they wanted to do. So um, that's it's really a pretty cool program. Um, and I actually learned that it really um, goes along with the Kansas State Assessments too, because that's what they're doing. That's what kind of, what they're kind of going towards in Kansas. So it's been a really great experience. You know, that's certainly something we've been doing here in New York as well, and it's it's interesting. So, kind of walk me through just the the format for the, from the student perspective, maybe. So you provide them with a document, and they analyze the document within the program. Is that? Yes, yes. So basically there would be like three to four documents anywhere in there. And um, they take the first document, let's say it's a poster, they look at it, Zoom in provides all of the questions like on the side. Um, it can, they can highlight, there's a feature where they can um, look up vocab words, all of those different things. Um, and they answer all these questions about it. They're like guiding questions pretty much. Um, and then they do that for all four or five documents, however many there are. And then at the end they take what they've learned and the notes they've taken and write a paper about it, taking a stance on like, how they viewed slaves during the Civil War, that kind of thing. So really interesting stuff. And so for you as the teacher now, if we can bounce back to that, I know you highlighted some of it. So you put the documents together and you put the questions together? No, no, no. Zoom in totally does it all for you. Oh, wow. So they have it built into their program. There's lessons anywhere ranging from like sixth grade, U.S. history, all the way up to high school history, world history. Um, they put all the documents on there. They have all the lessons on there. It's completely free. You just sign up. Um, and I just piloted it last year before it went live. And so now that it's live, anyone can do it. And it's really a cool thing um, to be able to participate in. The key word being free. <laughs> yes, <laughs> always, yes. Always great to have free resources. Yes, uh, and good free resources is a great, and it's so good. So I really like it. And tell me just your students' reactions to the program. Um, like I think, engaged. yeah, yeah, I think, first of all, anything they can do on the computer, it makes it even cooler, you know, kids in this generation love computer and that kind of thing. Um, and so anything they can do with that, but then they also, um, I see a lot of them able to, anything hands-on as well helps them, and so that was really a good thing for them. Um, overall, I got good comments. They don't necessarily like the paper writing part at the end, you know, sometimes that's mm -hmm. not their favorite, but it's something good that they need to know how to do anyway, so why not do it on the computer? When you say paper writing, is that within the program or just pen and like pencil and paper? No, it's within the program as well. Okay. Yeah. So wow. even like a format you can use to write papers. That's great. Really cool. All right. So tell me, um, 
it sounds like you're a pretty tech savvy and, and teacher that, that looks to try new new things in your classroom. And you're a relatively new teacher, right? Graduated in 2012. So uh -huh. um, it's my fourth year. Fourth year into it. So uh, are there other programs that you like to use that you find as far as ed tech wise that have been good for social studies? Um, I, I experiment with a lot of apps on the iPads. We have a lot of different technology and um, we have iPads, laptops, and I have a smart board. And so we've done a lot of different things. Um, I also teach a seventh grade computers class. So I try to incorporate just the general like PowerPoint, um, Microsoft Word stuff into their um, lessons because it's important for them to know how to use that. We also do like different apps on the iPad, like EduCreations is one that we just recently did. Um, and it kind of helps them to be able to build stuff in on an iPad or using different apps, things like that. So it's been really interesting. And um, there's always new apps coming out. I probably couldn't list half of the ones that I use because I always try, you know, you always try new stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Edu Creations is a great one, uh, especially not only just for teachers, but for students, for them to, to kind of generate just change the dynamic of your traditional social studies assignment from, again, you know, your more paper pencil thing to have, actually having them explain it. Uh, I used it with a teacher locally here as well and, and found the teacher, the, the students really liked it. It helped them organize it. And again, it changed the, the dynamic yeah. of your typical social studies project. Yeah. Um, so as far as, um, social studies and education. And again, I'm, I'm a big social studies fan. I was an elementary teacher for 15 years and my favorite, you know, uh, subject area to teach was social studies. And yet I've probably told this story even on this program many times before. It always hurt my feelings because at one point, you know, you get those kids saying, oh, you know, social studies, social uh -huh. studies is so boring. Oh, yeah. History is yeah. so boring. Um, and I tried not to take it personally, but you do. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so I, I've, it's been my mission ever since I've been kind of an ed tech person to try and make social studies more engaging. And uh -huh. do you think we can do that in social studies? And do, if you could look into your crystal ball, do you see mm -hmm. some ways we can change social studies education to make it more engaging and fun for students? I sure hope so. Um, I think in my class, I really try to do a lot of hands-on stuff. Um, I'm not one just sit down, open your textbook and read. I think that's the most boring thing in the world. And um, that's not the way I teach it all. So we do a lot of like cutting out things. We do a lot of posters. We do a lot of technology. Um, I just like to mix it up in my class. I get the students up and out of their chairs um, trying to show them why it's important. Um, you know, there's things we watch. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of CNN Student News. We watch that all the time to keep updated on stuff that's going on in the world. So I really try to make it relevant to them um, with the elections coming up and that kind of thing. Um, I hope my kids don't think it's boring, but you know, you try <laughs> your hardest and what can you do? Um, I hope it's more about the skills that we teach them more than just, you know, the dates and specific things, you know. Off of that question, kind of as an aside, a lot of video games, like high powered video games, have social yeah. studies and have historical contexts. Assassin's yeah. Creed being one of them uh -huh. has their entire, you know, uh, every different game has a different era of social studies or history that's involved. Is there a way that you can bring that, you know, even the, just the con concepts and content? Are you seeing that at all? Are you able to talk to your students about, uh, you know, historical games and video games, combining that together? Yeah, I am. I'm not a big video game buff, and so I'm not the best at, you know, but the kids will be like, oh, I saw that on Assassin's Creed, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I've never played it before, but yeah, that's great. <laughs> so it kind of helps, you know, they think it's interesting to them, so that's good. Yeah, and you know, I'm doing a gamification course, and again, because my passion is history, one of the the places I found, and again, I'm not, I don't have the time myself, be having a family and all that stuff, running around mm -hmm. to do games as much as I'd like to, um, but I have found that some really good resources. First of all, are just YouTube. YouTube has almost every game. Yes. Kids are yes. explaining their games. There's even an app that's a YouTube-based app of just games, kids gameplay, and, yeah. and recording their games. Uh, yeah. Whoops, lights go off here. Oh, um, okay. There's also 
Uh, Wikipedia actually has a lot of entries about the game, so you can read up about the content that's even being yes. portrayed. And then the last one is um, Common Sense Media. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yes, Rafi. I love Common Sense Media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do a great job of reviews. They may not go into the specifics of the content, but those are really kind of good places. If nothing else, like you said, like your students will say, hey, I did this on Assassin's Creed 3, I learned this. And yeah. you at least have a resource maybe to check back on to say, oh, yeah, you know, tell me about it and what's the history. And, and you know, yeah. I found with Assassin's Creed 3, some of the history is a little bit, uh, you know, sketchy as far as, but, but they're, they're, they're creating a story, you know, yeah, they're creating a narrative sure. off of history. So, which is um, awesome. Yeah. And how about um, just making it engaging, like uh, <laughs> gamification? <Sorry. laughs> That's okay. We're getting the lights going off. And Phones, don't. you know. Yeah. <laughs> how about like gamification principles? Do you do anything with that to try and make social studies like badging or anything like that? Points and scores? Hey, I'm in the middle of something. I'm going to call you back. All right, bye. Sorry. Um, gamification, making games, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yes, we do. Um, I not so much on technology yet because I haven't quite, you know, gotten all that figured out. We do. Um, I have made a storybook through technology using the iPads, though, which has been kind of cool, where they could create their own like little online story. Um, but as far as like creating games, um, I have this game that I play with them called Oh Snap. It's a card game where either I make up the questions or they make up the questions. We do stuff like that. Uh, as far as technology, not so much, but you know, we'll get there eventually. So, I think I've heard of that. Oh, snap! I've heard of that? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a, fun. Good. And um, I always make the kids say it funny, like "Oh, snap!" So they think <laughs> you know, it's a cool thing to do. So. Sure. <laughs> so, um, outside of um, outside of technology in school, uh -huh. what are some things that you do and? your husband and family, or just what are some things you do to power down, get away from technology? Um, me personally or with my kids? Either one. Um, I think in school, I think a lot of stuff is based on um, technology and their whole life is centered around their phone. You know how 12, 13 and 14 year olds are. And mm -hmm. so um, we do do stuff without technology. Sometimes we'll just have no technology days or we'll just do stuff that, you know, um, they have to socialize or they have to have a discussion. Imagine that without typing, you know, because it's important for them to be able to have those face to face conversations. Um, and when I'm at home, I don't really, I'm not a big like check my phone every 20 seconds type person. You know, we'll go to the park, walk around, that kind of thing. And we have a five month old. He loves his walks. So we go on walks and do things like that as well. So it's good. Great. Um, so we've talked a lot about uh, already how you can make social studies more engaging. Uh, are there any projects that you're looking to do? Is there any new thing that you're kind of on your horizon that you're keeping track of? Um, well, I teach geography. And so um, some things I've always kind of wanted to do is kind of Skype with other um, countries. And so we've been kind of looking into that some. Um, I know Edmodo, I use Edmodo a lot. My kids get tired of it because I use it so much. Um, but we can, there's a lot of forums through there that you can get on and kind of Skype with different people. So I'd love to do that at some point. Um, it'd be really cool to do something like that. Um, but other than that, I'm just doing, you know, just looking out and seeing what's new and what I can use. So, you know, I think that last one you said is actually could be one of the most powerful things in social studies is the ability to connect with other people, other cultures mm -hmm. with really the click of the button. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think we kind of overlook that. It may seem like it now that's one of the simpler technologies, but I think actually that might be one of the most important technologies we can we can use with our students. So, yeah, I like that. I, I like that concept. And a lot of kids can't fathom anything outside of their little bubble, you know, and so it's just interesting to always see the reactions. Well, in being, you know, now we're so um, globally connected, I guess is the best word mm -hmm. to, uh, to use. And, and just even if you watch your nightly news with uh, what goes on in the Middle East and, and you yes. know, even just across our borders and, you know, making conversations along those lines to, I guess reach out and, and hopefully get some understanding. I think again, it's a powerful. Mm -hmm. thing, yeah, so. very cool. All right. Well, it is time for the speed geek questions, and my 
I was going to check my app here and see if I have it uh, uploaded. Um, but if not, we've got three Speed Geek questions for you. So they're basically okay. simple, quick, short answer um, questions for you. So I'm just going to kind of spin the wheel here. It looks like I've lost my thing. So I'm just going off the top with these ones. So first of Perfect. all, what is your first computer? What is my What was my what first, was computer? first computer? Yes. Well, I didn't get a laptop of my own until I went to college, which was in 2007. It was just a Dell laptop. And before that, my parents had just a basic, like, you know, regular computer in their kitchen that I used. But other than that. So a desktop, desktop PC. Yeah. And I think I'll follow up with that. Uh, iOS or actually Mac or PC. What's your favorite? Well, I know how to use a PC better. My husband would argue with me, but he's a <laughs> Mac person. But I like PC personally. <laughs> okay. And um, favorite tablet as it stands? iPads, uh, Chromebook, we'll throw Chromebook um, Chromebook, I will go with Chromebook. Like oh. Google, like Chromebooks, yep. Yeah. Are you using Chromebooks in your here. district? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you um, have Google a... Google Docs. Google Docs is great, okay. just using all that stuff. I have kids share stuff with me all the time, that kind of thing, so. Do you have a one-to-one -one initiative in your school? I should have. Essentially, um, we don't, they don't take them home or anything like that, but every kid has a laptop or something or iPad or something they can use at some point. Um, and they're able, we have enough for everybody, so. So really in each class they, they go. Now, do they sign in with a Google account, that sort of thing, or is um, Yes, on the Chromebooks they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let me throw out one more question. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Okay, are you getting ready for the new Star Wars coming up? Uh, yes, I've seen the trailer. It actually looks pretty good. It looks It'll really good, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks it really looks good. Really yeah. good. All right. Well, those are my questions for the day, and um, thank you. And, and next time, I think we'll have to have you and your husband. I, I didn't think about that. Had, <laughs> I could have had my first husband and wife interview. Well, there you go. We can be your first. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, if I ever make it to Kansas, I'll stop in and say hello. Sounds and, great. Uh, get, the offer is extended as well for your family to if you're ever in the Buffalo area. So perfect. Uh, keep up the good work. I really like what what. Uh, how you're kind of pushing the boundaries with social studies. So keep up the good work and get that Twitter account, okay? Okay, will do. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.